welcome to another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Jesse, and this tip we're going to be talking about the 3D bounding box. The 3D bounding box was added in 2013, and it's a pretty neat feature. The 3D bounding box was actually designed for use with weldments. Now, what we see in front of me is not a weldment. I have a solid body. We can see that I have one solid body listed out in my tree. It is often helpful to know what size box this part would fit into. This can be helpful for ordering stock if you're machining this part or for many other reasons. In order to use this functionality, we just have to let SolidWorks know that we want to treat this part as if it were a weldment. To do that, I'll come over to my weldments tab, which I have turned on. If you don't have your weldments tab turned on, simply right click and find the weldments. In order to convert this into a weldment part, I will simply click weldment and we see that that creates a cut list and also adds a weldment feature in my tree. Now in order to generate the 3D bounding box, all we have to do is come up to our cut list item, right click on the folder, and come down to create bounding box. When I select create bounding box, it doesn't look like it actually does anything, but it has created our bounding box for us already. If I expand out the folder, we see that I now have a 3D sketch. If I turn on this 3D sketch, we can see that we now visibly have the bounding box. Let's take a look from the front so we can see how this works. I've made a sample part here that has a strange shape at the top, something that would be relatively difficult to identify where the peak would really be. And we can see that here we have fairly close on this side, but it appears that this is actually the top of the part. On the other side, I have a couple of bosses sticking out towards the side, just so the width of the part was changed. And we see that the 3D bounding box has fit to the geometry in all directions. What I like to do is actually come back and add dimensions to this. So what I'll do is move back to sketch, turn on my smart dimension, and I'll set this to reference dimension. From here, we can add dimensions. And now we have an easy readout as to what size stock we might need for this part. The nice thing with the 3D bounding box is it will update. For example, if I change the size of this part, we see that the 3D bounding box will update along with it. Now what happens if this part is not in the orientation that matches the default coordinate system? That's not a problem either. In fact, we can see that we can come back in and actually edit the 3D bounding box. Again, right click, instead of creating the 3D bounding box, I'm going to edit my bounding box. And from here we can choose an orientation. I have a plane in my part, which I will select. And we can see that the 3D bounding box changes its orientation, and with an update, the dimensions do as well. Thanks for stopping in for another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip, and I hope we'll see you next time. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.